Joni, nearly five years, uh, many elections in the UK, it all came down to fish. Has this been resolved now? <laughs> well, I think you've asked me that a lot of times over the last few years. The answer is no, um, because there's going to be a transition period, more negotiations going on. This was never going to be simple. And if you think the combination of the two things you just talked about, um, tier four lockdown and trucks lined up at Dover with an expectation that if a sensible deal isn't done, the trucks are going to get longer. The British people have got to see what a, what a crazy no-deal Brexit would look like. So eventually the British government had to fold to some degree, but there's still the Irish question. There's still the question about what are you going to do about free movement and what is going to happen to living standards? Because clearly it looks like the most disastrous form of Brexit isn't going to take place, but still living standards are going to fall. Um, the support, I suspect, for Scottish independence is going to rise because of it, and there's an election in May. So this still looks like a pretty disastrous step. Perhaps they're making best of it now, but the combination of a pandemic, a tier four lockdown, closure of the ports in Dover, with an expectation that things will get worse in January, doesn't look great. Well, maybe we can come to some of those many other hurdles in a moment, but I want to focus yeah. uh, first on that fisheries question because total trade with the EU is $560 billion. A fisheries, just a tiny fraction of that, $790 million. But was this right. really a question about sovereignty? Well, it's really hard to understand if you're a Labour economist. I went and checked how many people are actually employed in fishing, and you get numbers of around 12,000. If you actually go and check, I went and looked at how many people are employed at Boots the Chemist. Answer about 52,000. So, you know, roughly five times bigger. All this fuss about a few boats. I mean, the question is, well, obviously there's something deeper here. There's something about Britain's being an island. But in a sense, the rest of the country being held hostage to a few fishing boats doesn't really make a lot of sense. And in the end... Um, folding is going to have to happen. But if you think the reality is this is a tiny, inconsequential sector that perhaps has had much more importance attached to it than it should have done. And so, that in a sense, people will lose because they're arguing about 12,000 jobs in, in the fishing sector. Tell us a little bit about the rest of the jobs in the, from the likes of Boots or all of these other companies. How bad has it been for business? How bad could it become, given how close we're cutting it to the deadline? And how right. this, as you say, is still not over? Well, I think it's a really hard question. But I think we, we, we've, we've seen um, the economy slowing recently because of the pandemic and the lockdown and the reintroduction of lockdown. So we've seen, I was just looking before I came on, the unemployment numbers are, are rising, growth is already stalling, retail sales are dropping, travel's collapsed, redundancies are surging before you get to Brexit. And obviously Brexit itself, I mean, the, one of the big things it's gonna do is it prevents free movement of people and goods. And such moves that do come are gonna be slower and there are gonna be tariffs applied um, and those things haven't really been worked out. And it's clear when you talk to businesses, they don't really know what to prepare for. I mean, so the, 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 the actual Brexit decision occurs on January the 1st, and where are we? We're a few days before that. What are firms supposed to do? What are mm. they going to do about shipping their whatever it is to France, to Germany, and in the other direction? So this is going to be chaotic. The only issue is how devastatingly chaotic are only partially chaotic. I mean, I've, I've argued frequently, this looks like the worst decision in peacetime made by any, any country ever. I actually this week said, I thought maybe for a thousand years, but perhaps it's longer. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say to the financial markets though? Because when it comes to financial UK assets, we have seen the rally in the pound, we have seen UK stocks now. Uh, getting uh, rallying to a 10-month high or so. And what we continue to hear is that perhaps financial sectors will not get hit as much as Main Street. Will right. we see more of a growing divide here in the country as well? Right. Well, I think, I think obviously, the, the markets pretty much took the view that, I, that I've taken, which is that reality eventually was going to be um, kick in. 
politicians like Michael Gove and Boris Johnson and others were going to be mugged by reality. Also seeing that now the prospect of a trade deal with the United States with a new Biden presidency, reality kind of kicked in. And I think the markets realized that um, a, a giant shock probably isn't coming. There's going to be time for things to resolve themselves. But ultimately, firms have the option of moving to Dublin or moving to Amsterdam. Um, and if Scottish independence come, of moving to Edinburgh. So I think, for, I think firms and the markets like to see certainty, the rise in the pound, the rise in the markets now, uh, now are sort of supportive. Um, but this does not look great for UK mm. PLC. It's certainly, I mean, I think the only issue is how bad is it? Uh, as an economist, I see no economic benefits from it. The only question is how bad are the, are the costs? And you put that on top of this, this terrible pandemic. And the government's talked about, well, we'll keep the furlough scheme and other things going until April. And they're even talking again about austerity. So if any of that kicks in, the markets won't like it. But of course, what they'll do is they'll make it really very difficult for the government to do something as stupid as that. 